Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Whitling's episode number 40. So now that I'm back into it, sort of considering what the next step should be, and last night I decided that the current setup of clicking, dragging, then releasing, I don't know how much I like that. So I'm going to give it a shot to say after the mouse has traveled a certain distance, just do the spin. So let's see, here we check for, this is in our touch input, is touching. <laughs> I got chat going on my other screen in case a person or two show up. <laughs> Doubtful. Okay, so let's see. If we're touching, add to our touch deltas. Cool. Um... And I, I guess I'm going to have to, I mean, I guess I could check the distance between the first one and the current one. But that would mean if you sort of wiggled back and forth, things might not be very happy. <laughs> So maybe what I could do is, if the player drags, <clears throat> I know that my average delta vector is pointing this way. And then if at any point the current mouse position to the, no, no, the center to the current mouse position is the opposite direction from the average, then just throw out all the other points. I like that idea. So let's save this. Average delta. So I'm going to want this. I'm going to want this as well. It's no longer in release swipe. So now that we have the average delta, which is the average direction that the thing is moving, check for User direction change. That's more of a negation, right? So I'm drawing a line from vector three, um, center to mouse, or maybe start to mouse. Dang it, you know what, I probably should, instead of making this an else if, just make it an if, right? Yeah. So if we have more than one touch delta, get the average, normalize it. Start to mouse, and now we need to do a dot product. So float. What do we call this? I believe it's omega? No, theta? Angle between? Start to mouse. So we'll do the Hadamard product, or the dot product, between start to mouse and 
average delta. Print um, direction changed, throwing out all previous touch deltas. When do I call this function? Update. Okay. This is going to be wrecking my draw speed, but that's okay because it is developer time. What? How did I do that? Hmm. Travel distance is zero. Hmm. There we go. One tab all the way. So this is really bizarre. Do I have to normalize start to mouse? It's almost like this function is not running. Oh, it's not. <laughs> what? Is that logic in the mouse controller? Am I doing this in the totally wrong spot? Touch start. Calculate swipe, handle tap, clear. Okay, so the logic is <clears throat> happening here. So this only runs if it's not touching anymore. And I guess I want to run this every frame. And if that's a problem, we can fix it later. From zero to last, Where do we set start position? Touch start. Oh, okay. We set it here. Hmm, I could use touch start here. If travel distance is greater than min swipe distance, calculate swipe. You know. This might fix it, just getting rid of that else. Ooh. <laughs> cool. That is not what I wanted. All 
Oh, right, because I'm clearing it here. Um, Hmm. Whoa. <laughs> I don't want to handle tap here. I want to handle tap. What is that called? Is touching. So if we're not touching anymore, that's when we handle the tap. I don't really need to print the travel distance every frame. Now it says handling tap. Maybe because I'm not clearing it. Oh, argument out of range. Mouse controller sixty six A. So I think what's happening is I'm going the travel distance, I'm clearing, I'm swiping. Maybe I need some other boolean to store the state so that it doesn't automatically think we're touching again and then doing another start position because that's not what we want. So if I let go, it should clear. And then next time through, this should fail. Right? But when I let go, that's when it Oh, damn. I'm not clicking anymore. That is sick. Oh, man, that is sick. Boom. So now I just need to figure out how to stop it from selecting the other cube on mouse release. So why is it doing that on mouse release? Get mouse button.
Let's debug. Oh geez, I've been working with Lua lately, so my semicolons are gonna suffer until I get reacclimated to C sharp. There we go. Yep, cool. That's a tap. And then a spin and a let go. Okay, that seems correct. This should be false. Fail. What are our touch positions? 71. So I think those are the 71 extra frames after the cube has spun. So that makes sense. It handles a tap because the positions are up there. So maybe I should... Do I have a concept of current cube here? Cube controller. If is touching... I don't want to My original thought was to go for is the cube currently spinning? And if the cube is currently spinning, don't don't be adding to our touch positions. Um Dang it, that is so good. Sure, yeah. I'm okay with that acting a little bit goofy. I'm not going to worry about that. Um... Mm, that is nice. Okay, okay. So let's see. When the mouse is released, I don't want to tap. I think for tap, I need to do something different. I need to do a mouse down and mouse up check. And if both of those ray casts hit the same cube, then handle tap. Do a real click instead of kind of cheating like I am. So it is touching. So we're going to get rid of this. Um, yeah, we'll call this check for tap, uh, validate tap. Oh, there's already a handle tap. Well then, 
Well then. <laughs> sure, let's do it here. Um, and then we'll do a private function that returns a game object called raycast to selectable. And this is going to take in, what will this take in? A mouse position? We already will know the mouse position. So we'll have some results. We will return it. And instead of doing touch, touch positions, we're just going to do current mouse position. I'm going to want our raycast hit here. And we're going to need a member variable. And this will be called possible selection. Handle tap. So if input get mouse button down, possible selection equals recast to selectable. I'm sensing an error lurking here, but let's just let's just plow forward. If get mouse button up and possible selection is equal to the raycast to selectable. So if they released on the same one. Here, oops, selected, and let's change this to return a selectable, which means that our possible selection, good name, good name, possible selection, Select. I don't need this here. That would be spamming us. Let's see how this goes. Oh, hey, hey. Return null. No. Oh, I need to check to see if it's null as well. That'll break stuff, right? If I click on nothing. Okay. Oh, hey! <laughs> what do we got here? Select a cube. Oh, geez, I should have just commented that out, shouldn't I? I think I just said selected dot select. Okay. Oh, ah, okay, okay. I broke after the first time. So the first time I clicked down here, but boom, boom, nice.
they all the same? They are. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. That means that our cube controller selected cube has failed. So why would that fail? Let's step into here. Boom. So, on selected, we're just highlighting the material. I don't I don't do this very often, but it's time for a control Z travel back in time. See what the heck we did wrong. Cube selector select selected. Aha. Damn it. <laughs> I also believe it will break if we try and, what is that? Ah, uh, right, right. It'll try and break if we select the same object twice. So that's something we're gonna have to try and test. We also want to do a null check. Mm. Mm, jeez, okay. Okay. <laughs> hmm, we're getting a little bit closer. But it's going to be so nice when a user can just select and then... Oh, jeez. Oh boy. That seems to be broken too. How much time we got? Halfway. Okay. Oh. Okay, let's continue breaking it down. Click. Down, drag, drag, let go, click. So when I am clicking, let's move handle tap to the first thing that happens. And then if we decide to handle the tap, let's do a touch, touch positions dot clear. <clears throat> hey. Oh, hey, hey, yeah. Oh, 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, can I spin this one? Oh, I gotta stop that from happening. <laughs> oh, the same one. Okay, yep, that's a problem. So if the mouse down is on the same one, on the currently selected, possible selection. Mouse down. So if I click on the one that's currently selected, possible selection will still be that one. Can I just look at... Uh, selectable. So, first we'll get the, oh geez, selectable, first of all. If test selection equals possible selection, clicked on same cube, clear mouse positions. Else, oh hey, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hmm. I think that's something that people would learn. Like, I still can't do this here. That looks pretty good. What happens if I click out here? Yeah. So if down is equal to nothing, what happens here? This will fail, so nothing will happen. This will be null. And then I'll set this to here. Hey. Sure, okay. Does that only happen when I click on nothing first? Yes. And it's fine. Nothing. Oh, shoot. Currently selected does not equal null. Mm. 
So we'll just say, if the thing that is trying to be selected is nothing, exit the function early. Oh, you know what? That means we should just be able to pass null here. I have no problem clearing the touch positions at this point. That might be a mistake, but I don't know. Oh! <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> oh. What? Ugh. How about every frame that the mouse is not down clear? I feel like this is pretty janky code. Um, but, you know, solving one problem at a time. Damn it. Okay. That seemed to fix that problem. It does seem a little bit easier to use Cool. Okay. So that's working okay. So let's break in here. Does my guy still die here? Good, 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 good. So the only thing it's not happy about is if I click, handling tab, nothing, drag, fail, click here, drag, spin. That's not what I want. It's this test swipe. Calculate swipe. Where do I do the test swipe? Cube controller test swipe. Do an easy out here. Nothing, nothing, hey, click.
Hmm. So if I drag and then let go and then click, I don't know. You have to tap on it and then you can just from anywhere. That's pretty cool too, because you don't have to be over the cube. Ooh, I like that a lot. <laughs> we have found another bug. Boop. I bet that this side has a three way connection. Oh, come on. Yeah, it does have a three-way connection. Oh, my God. What am I going to do? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, what an edge case. Oh, my. So it's connected here and here. I guess what I could do is take the left or right node, whichever one it's touching, and see which cubes it's overlapping. And if it's overlapping a cube, throw out the possible node. From the other thing? I don't know. Oh. Ooh. Because this one is still overlapping this one here. Why does that look wrong? It's probably just the lighting. They're just two overlapping path node spheres. Wow, this is a really good find. I would not have found this in a million years. Well, no, somebody would have found it, but I would not have guessed about this edge case. Do I have time to finish it? Maybe we'll save that for tomorrow. Um, well, you know, I got 15 minutes to work on it. So let's see. What options do I have? Thank <laughs> you.
been a long time. But let's get out the drawing board. Hope my cat didn't chew it to pieces. Looks good. Well, I definitely want my Twitch chat up so I can look at nothing. Where are we? Seems like I'm working my way back up this way. Okay, so. Oh, dang it. No. Well, unfortunately, my Wacom tablet thinks I'm on two screens now, so my drawing is going to be pretty goofy looking. So I've got a cube. Oh my gosh. And a cube here. And this cube has essentially three paths that all coincide on this corner. And this path should be marked as no neighbor. Because the whittling would have to go through the cube to get to the other side. I think I'm just going to have to test to see if I am moving to a node that is on the same cube. Does this node intersect with any other cube body? It's crazy how just drawing stuff out helps so much. Pen pencil and paper are programmers. Not greatest weapon. Uh, it's a pretty good, pretty good tool. Okay, so where would that live? That would live in pathing. Inside path node. Validate. Only possible for intercube transition. I think this would be intracube. No, intrastate is the, the one that goes across states. No, but intranet is internal. Let's check it out. to form words that mean on the inside within. Gotcha. Intra cube transition. So here we would set next, but we need to I can just put this in this condition here, can't I? And check or overlap with node on same cube. Nope, that's pretty close. Check for overlap with other cube. Linked path node on same cube. This is a path node. I feel like I could get rid of this.
So this is our box collider, and this is the big one. So I'm going to find all cube rotators. No, all cube cores. And then get the box collider. Do I already have all cube cores? That's not something I need to get every time. Should that belong in the path node? That would mean every path node would have a reference to all of the cube cores. Not a big fan of that. My cube manager. Filter, run my spawners. Core, 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 core. Oh boy, um, to do, move this somewhere else. Private static cube core array. How did it know what cube cores was? That worries me a lot. Okay, not in here. And then we'll go to the Awake. So if cube cores is not null, cube cores is equal to <laughs> find objects of type. There we go. So we've got a static variable, stores all of the cube cores. That means that here, when we're checking for overlap with other cube, this is definitely not the most efficient. I could be using spatial partitioning here, but I really don't think I need to go that far. Like. What is this? This happens possibly like 800 times in a frame when I decide to spin it, or when the spinning is done. That's one tiny lag spike. We'll see if it even lags. I doubt it will. Um, let's rename this to stick with our naming convention. So, if we get through all of this, we can return false. <coughs> now we need to check if a if the test node overlaps Well, let's get the box collider. Core Collider. And we'll do a sanity check here. If it equals null, let's continue. 
Otherwise, we move forward, and so we've got our path node, test node. I don't think we can do this. This would be so sweet. I could do closest point. And that could actually just be the test or test node transform position. And then I can say if the distance between the closest point and we'll just use test node transform position again is less than node collider dot radius. Return true. So what, oh, okay, what is the best way to test this? I know that I need this set up here. And one of them needs a three-pronged connection. So I'll use this one. Oh, dang it. Let's turn you off, move you both up one. Okay, so this cube is fine. We just need this cube to cube one. So we're going to use all diagonals here. And so this would be, oh boy, I think it's left face. Yes. And then that would be forward face. Okay. Now let's make it nice and easy on ourselves. <clears throat> This would be a, oh boy, on up, we've got a half curve down. Yes, okay. Oh, geez. Oh, that should be okay. Whoa, hey. Just running every frame. Oh Jesus! Oh, exactly right on the hour. Um. Okay, let's just make a note. Um. Why is Q cores empty? Oh, hey, I bet I know where that is, because I did this in a wake. My awake.
Oh, hey. Nope, still, every queue is failing. Same spot. Okay, so we'll leave it there today. Um, and I've got lots of other work to do. Unfortunately, I can't keep working on this. But one hour successfully invested. Right, right there. Here, here. Fail here to find Q cores at appropriate time. I bet it's just the path nodes. Um, fixing this due to triple diagonal. Corner connections need an extra check for cubes that should block the Whitling's path. Let's double check our branch node. Are we using start in here? We are! Aha, okay. Um, that makes sense. Path node, where was my awake? Path node, do not call start. Straight path face clone. Really? Straight diagonal. So each Okay. Well, my stop gaps were not successful, <clears throat> but perhaps tomorrow we can solve this problem. I'm pretty excited with what we did today, and we found a new edge case, which is very exciting. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow.